and welcome to Hardway Learning, where we look stupid so you don't have to. Today we are working on the Miata. We're doing some injectors. We're upgrading to the Flowforce 640cc injectors. I got them used on MiataTurbo.net. They were pretty low miles. They look really nice. Basically doubling the fuel that the current injectors provide. I think the stock 96 injectors are 265 cc's and these are 640. So we're gonna make some serious hearse purrs with that. But to get started, you start the car and unplug the fuel harness or something underneath the steering column. It basically cuts off the fuel and it should relieve the pressure and the car will die. And then when you remove the injectors, it won't spray fuel everywhere, which we don't really enjoy. So we'll show you where that harness is. You'll undo the fuel cap. And we'll start tackling this. So we heard some clunking on the front of the car. We're getting passed by the sheriff. <laughs> Hopefully it starts. Is it going lean? What's their AFR? 12, 8, 12, 6, 13, 12, 8. This harness up by the steering column right there. We're going to start the car and unplug that. Oh yeah. That is that is the right one because it died. All right, so now that we have run out of fuel intentionally, we are going to start removing everything that's in the way of the fuel rail. So I'm going to pull this guy out. Inside to side. And pull you. This harness here. Now we pull this guy out of here. This guy out of the way. <clears throat> All right, now the trick is to not drop these bolts. We have a history. Do we have like a piece of tape we can put on the... If you were a piece of tape, where would you be? So these 12 millimeter bolts here, removing them guys. You don't want to drop the rubber inserts either. So now this whole fuel rail should be able to come up. Keep the rubber pieces that spaces the fuel rail off of the injectors. Without cutting the harness, hopefully. Move that harness out of the way. So we watched Greg Peters and a car passion channel doing his Miata. So he took the fuel lines off here. You're probably gonna dribble some fuel, so we got some rags there. Holy crap, that doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. <laughs> oh, look at him go! Look at him go! I don't see why that was so difficult. Well, some of list us of excuses coming in three, two, one. I think if you disconnect these, I guess. I mean, does it need to come out? I know that's kind of what I'm wondering. So, as you can see, there is a lot of dirt where the injectors sit, so you kind of want you want to carefully, without getting any dirt into the hole, pull the debris away from that ceiling surface, because that is a potential leak 
the spot. Well, when you're installing the injectors, you want to use a little bit of lubrication. So I'm going to put some Vaseline around this O-ring and then seat it onto the fuel rail. It's just a tight squeeze. This guy, I'm missing the little hat because I just tried plugging it into the, the head. Um, but it's it stayed behind in the head, which I think is okay. Buy some of this Vaseline here. I mean, it's just gonna combust, right? <laughs> okay, now we gotta line up this carefully. And it just doesn't feel like that's possible. Because I'm hitting something. Oh, that seems pretty legit. Spacers? Yeah. Because of the height of these, you add these spacers, these washers, to space out the fuel rail a little further. You gotta, yeah. Plug everything back in and then we will do a, a leak down test with the uh, diagnostic pin. We'll show that in a second. All right, so in order to check for any fuel leaks, we're gonna jumper the fuel pump. So it's the ground and the fuel pump pin. And this paper clip is like too big. Same. Yeah, I'd stop it. So this is a good example of why you need to be careful putting the fuel rail on. We have a leak on our f very frontal injector. Um, so we're gonna have to take everything back out and put a new seal on there.